which is the ultimate hot hatch? Well, in this video, we're going to find out because I've brought together my three favorite, the Mercedes AMG A45S, the new Toyota GR Yaris, and the recently revised Honda Civic Type R. Now, what we're going to do is compare them across a range of categories. I'm going to hoon them around a lap. I'm going to test their braking performance. I'm going to compare the sound their engines make. I'm also going to see how close they can get to the claimed manufacturer 0 to 60 type. I'll also drive them in different conditions and do some tests that will matter to car enthusiasts. <laughs> then what I'm going to do is mark each car for how well it does in each test. Three points for a win, two points for second place, and just one point for the car that comes last. I'm going to tot up all the points, and the car with the most points overall wins. Simple. Let's get on with it. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off by talking about the prices because a hot hatch should be relatively affordable. And this Toyota GR Yaris starts at just under £30,000, which may seem like quite a lot for a Yaris, but it's a Yaris basically in name only. It's a very, very bespoke car. However, you are going to want to spend an extra £3,500 on the circuit pack. So you get a limited slip diff up front, at the back, and some better forged alloy wheels. You have to have that pack otherwise you're an idiot. And that takes the total cost to £33,500, which is quite a bit. Now the Civic Type R is a little bit more expensive, £34,500. But when you consider that it's a bigger car, it does seem like better value than the Yaris. Finally, we come to the A45S, and it starts from just over £51,000, which is hell of a lot of money for a hot hatch. As a result, it comes last in terms of value for money. So it scores one point. The Yaris is second with two points, but the overall best value car here is the Civic Type R. So it gets three points. Now, if you are thinking about buying a new car, if you click on the pop out banner, just at there, it should be popping out now, and oh, there's a link below the video if you want to click on that instead, you can get a car wow, where you can save an average of £3,000 on a new car. Now, if you don't want to do that right now, and just maybe at a later date, all you have to do is simply Google help me car wow and take you straight there and me and my team will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers this next category is all about fanboy pleasing facts you know the kind of information that you can bore your friends with about your car fanboy pleasing facts in the case of this A45S, it's the fact that it has the most powerful four-cylinder series production engine ever produced it churns out 421 horsepower and it's hand-built by men and women in Alfalterbach, Germany. This one is actually made by a chap called Mark R... I can't read his last name, he's got a weird signature. But well done, Mark. You built it with your hands. Facts. The Honda Civic Type R is the quickest front-wheel drive production car round the Nürburgring with a time of 7 minutes, 43.8 seconds. Ow. <coughs> We've got to stop doing this thing where I get kicked in the arse when I say Nürburgring times. Anyway... Bizarrely, this car is actually five seconds quicker around the ring than the A45S, which is great. Get the Facts. Oh, I think I lost him. Anyway, if you want the ultimate fanboy car, it's got to be this. Reason being, this is a homologation special. It was built to go rallying, and Toyota had to build 25,000 of them as a road car. I mean, it's really special. It may be called a Yaris, but the only thing it shares with the normal Yaris are its headlights, its door mirrors, and its little roof aerial. It's bespoke, it's hand-built by specialist engineers at Toyota's special Motomachi plant in Japan. This car actually takes 10 times as long to build as a normal Yaris, and it's got loads of trick stuff like clever switchable four-wheel drive system and stuff like that. It is insane, and that's why it scores three points the Civic scores two points, and the Mercedes AMG one point for the fanboy pleasing facts. Stop that. Each of these cars has a feature which allows you to be a bit of a hooligan. So that Honda Civic, it's front wheel drive, brakes traction really easily, so you can do smoky burnouts away from the line, even though it is just the front wheel spinning. It's still annoying for people around you. That Mercedes AMG, it's got a really clever drift mode, which allows you to overspeed the rear wheels and slide it like a rear-wheel drive car, you can do donuts in it. It's amazing. 
though you never actually use it that often. You see, this Yaris actually has the most useful feature, and it's a manual, old-fashioned handbrake. And when you use it, it actually decouples the engine. It's designed to be used like your rally car doing handbrake turns, and that means that if you're going one way and suddenly think, no, I want to go the other, you can quite easily turn it around. And that's why the Honda scores one point, the Mercedes two points, and this Yaris three points. Brilliant. This next category is all about looks. And for me, my favorite is easily this GI Yaris. It's so special, so unique. It's a three door for starters, which is instantly more sporty than the other two. And then there's features such as the aggressive face, the wide haunches, the sloping roof line. It's insane. There's really nothing else like it. I love it. Now, don't get me wrong, this A45S is a really nice looking thing as well. For starters, the normal A-Class looks great, but this one with all the aero on it, just way more aggressive. It does stand out and I do like this yellow paint. The only problem for me with it is the fact that it's identical to the A35, which is cheaper. The only difference between the two is the fact that this one has quad tailpipes and the A35 has just dual tailpipes. And that's it. So people might get them confused. And you don't want that when you spend all that money. Finally, we come to the Honda, and I'm not going to mince my words here. This car looks Sorry, it just does. It's as though a 10-year-old boy has designed it after eating about a kilogram of sweets. It's a little bit embarrassing to be seen and to tell you the truth. I think they should probably just change the H on the number plate to a Y, and it'd be about right. Yuck. That's why this car scores one point for looks, the Mercedes two, and the little Toyota three points. Now we come to the sound test because you want your sport your heart hatch to sound good. So let's hear them. First, the Honda. Soft limiter. See what it's like when you're actually driving. On the outside, it's so-so, and on the inside, so-so. Doesn't sound great, this. <laughs> now let's try the GI Yaris. So, revving at a standstill. Oh, another soft limiter. It sounds sort of all right in here because you've got fake noise played through the speakers, which I don't like the idea of, but it's actually slightly pleasant on my ears. I know that on the outside, it sounds like a diesel. <laughs> Three cylinder rattle. Let's see what it's like when you're driving it. Yeah, I know it sounds bad on the outside. <laughs> Probably worse than the Civic, but inside it's slightly better. And that matters as the driver because you get to enjoy the sound more, even though it's fake and that makes me feel dirty. Ugh. Finally then, the AMG. Oh, you can rev it all the way up. So for the stationary noise test, this definitely wins. Oh, a little pop there. All right, let's see what it's like when you're driving it. Here we go. <laughs> well, I know it sounds better on the outside and it definitely sounds better on the inside than the other two cars, so it's a clear win for the AMG. It sounds the best, no question. So he gets three points. And I think in second place, it's the Toyota Just gets two points and the Honda comes last with one point. Now let's talk about interiors. And there's a clear winner here. It is the Mercedes. It's just head and shoulders above the other two. The design is super cool. It's got the best tech, the best infotainment. You've got electrically operated seats. Look, I've even got a lovely glass roof as well. Beautiful, beautiful cabin. Love it. In second place is the Honda. The general design of the cabin is pretty nice. Quality is good. I like the way they've lifted it for this Type R with the red flashes here, red on the steering wheel and on the seat. And the driving position itself is brilliant. I really love it. And the Alcantara steering wheel, that is just so racy. I like the fact you've got digital dials as well. The only real complaint is the infotainment system, which is poor. Thankfully, you just use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so it doesn't matter so much. 
it's nice. The worst interior is the Yaris. It's all just a bit dark and miserable and the material quality isn't as good as the other two. There are some nice things. Like, I do like these seats. They're very supportive. However, they do seem mounted quite high. So if you want to wear a helmet, it's a bit of a tight squeeze. And if you're really tall, you're not going to fit in this car at all. Another thing that's a bit annoying is this, look. The pod for the forward-facing camera for the safety systems extends quite far down. So this rear view mirror is quite low. And so you get a little gap between there and the top of the dash which is a bit annoying, kind of ruins your forward visibility. So this car gets one point for the interior, the Honda two and the Mercedes three points. This next test is about acceleration and how easy it is to get close to the manufacturer's claim 0 to 60 time. So this Yaris is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds, but I'm gonna see what I do in reality. And to do that, I'm gonna use my specialist timing gear up here now this car has a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol engine with just three cylinders so it puts out 261 horsepower and 360 newton meters of torque four-wheel drive should help me off the line but i'm going to put the car's four-wheel drive system into sport mode so now 70 percent of the power goes to the rear wheels which should help when launching but let's find out shall we come on decent launch not so decent gear change what did we get 0 to 60 in 5.86 seconds. Let's try again, see if I can do better. Best out of three. Not so good off the line. Oh, dirty gear change. <laughs> what did it get? Oh, yeah, it wasn't as good. <laughs> 6.14. Let's go. I've now got the car in trap mode and the stability off, see if that helps. Decent start. Oh, that's better. Yes, we got a time. 0 to 60 in 5.43 seconds. 0.1 of a second quicker than Toyota claims. Now let's try the Civic. So it has a two litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine with 320 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. Six speed manually again, but being front wheel drive, this may be harder to launch and achieve the claimed 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. Let's see what I do. That's spinning. That's crap. <laughs> that was utter gash. <laughs> Six point eight seconds. Whole second slower than it's supposed to do. But it was just spinning its wheels. Let's try again. That was even worse. Five point eight nine. Quite pleased with that. For this last launch, I'm going to try just sidestepping the clutch. See what happens. <laughs> I didn't like that. <laughs> oh yes, yes. That was wicked. Five point six two seconds. So that is point two of a second quicker than the manufacturer claims. So I did it in the Yaris 0.1 second quicker than the manufacturer claims. So this isn't the lead so far. Finally, then we come to the AMG. And just like with the Honda, you've got a two litre four cylinder turbo petrol. Though somehow the Germans, they managed to get an extra 100 horses out of their four cylinder two litre. It has 421 horsepower. It's mad. How have they done that? It's also got 400 newton meters of torque. As a result, Mercedes says it will do 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. But remember, this is all about how close or how much you can better the manufacturer's claim time. So let's see what I can do with this Mercedes. And it takes no skill at all. It's got an eight speed dual clutch automatic gearbox with launch control. I don't do anything besides put my left foot on the brake, throw the throttle, go into race start mode, release the brake. God, it's brutal, this thing. Whoa. Ooh. Nord 60, first go, 3.86 seconds. Hmm, interesting. That was a bit smoother. And what we got? <laughs> it's exactly the same. 3.86 seconds. Felt better. It was the same. Final go, this time I've turned the stability all the way off. See if that makes a difference. Mm. 
expected it. Oh, a little bit of a difference. 0 to 60 in 3.79 seconds. So what does that mean? Well, when I do the maths, it means that this car did 0.11 seconds quicker than the manufacturer claims. The Toyota did 0.09 seconds quicker than its manufacturer claims, but the Honda won overall by doing 0.18 seconds quicker than the manufacturer's claim 0 to 60 time. As a result, the Honda gets three points, this gets two points, and the Toyota just gets one point. This next category is all about features on the car that boy racers like, and one of them is badging. So, that Honda Civic Type R has this many Type R badges on it. The GR Yaris has this many GR badges on it. But that's nothing. This car has this many AMG badges on it. AMG badges, that's just nuts. But while badges are important, they're not as important as a cool exhaust system. And the Civic does have the best one. It's got three exhaust pipes, which is quite unusual. And they're completely real and all serve a purpose. While three exhausts are impressive, they're not as impressive as having a carbon fiber roof, which is what this GI Yaris has. Now, interestingly, this is actually a wrap. It is actually carbon fibre underneath, but to save money, they decided to wrap it rather than lacquer it, because that would have been more expensive. This is what it looks like underneath. Anyway, having a carbon fibre roof means that this car wins for having something that boy racers love. And that's why it gets three points, the Honda gets two points, and the Mercedes, that gets one point. Now I want to see how good these cars are at stopping. So I'm going to do a full emergency stop from 70 miles an hour and see how far it takes them to come to a complete halt. I'm going to start with the Civic. It's got 350 millimeter discs at front, gripped by four pot calipers. 305 discs at the back, single pot caliper, and it weighs 1,405 kilos. Let's get up to 70. There's a the 70. So, it stopped from 70 miles an hour in 48 meters. It's not bad, that. Ignore the fact that that's saying kilometers an hour up there for reasons, settings, so it's in meters, not feet. Now it's time for the AMG. It has 360 millimeter discs up front, gripped by six piston calipers, and at the back you've got a single piston caliper gripping a 330 millimeter disc. So the largest brakes, but then it does have the most weight. It comes in at 1,660 kilos, so it's a bit of a lard arse. Let's see how that affects the braking performance from 70. Right, here we go. 70. What are you gonna do? Oh, so <laughs> it broke from 70 miles an hour in 49 meters, which is one meter more than the Honda. But how will the Toyota do? This GR Yaris has 356 millimeter discs up front, gripped by four pot calipers. At the back, you've got 297 millimeter discs gripped by two pot calipers. Think about this car though, it's about the weight. 1,280 kilos, so it's by far and away the lightest car. Will that help it with this brake test? Let's find out. I love this engine. Okay, here we go. Come on! Oh, <laughs> I almost pushed the pedal through the floor. What do you get? So this stopped from 70 miles an hour in 50 meters. So despite being the lightest, it lost. The Honda won, gets three points. The AMG was second, gets two points. And this just gets one point. One of the main appeals of hot hatchbacks is the fact that they are hot, but also hatchbacks, which means practicality. Well, it should do. However, it doesn't here in the case of the GI Yaris so much. You see, it's a three door only, which means it's a pain for people to get into the back seats, especially as this Driver's seat doesn't slide forward. The passenger does, but for some reason, driver's seat, no. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to 
get in this way and then when you are in the back that sloping roof line which makes the car look so cool means that the rear headroom is awful then there's the boot really really small you can only fit three airplane size carry-on luggage cases in the boot underneath the load cover not so practical after all thankfully this amg has rear doors which means it's easy to get into the back and it's quite roomy back here it's not massive but it's fine look decent headroom decent leg room all good the boots are decent size as well you can fit five airplane style carry-on luggage cases underneath the load cover the most practical car though is this honda civic type r it's really roomy here in the back noticeably more so even than the mercedes it's a great car for families especially as you can fit seven suitcases in the boot really impressive I'm not so sure about this though fake carbon five on the seat backs anyhow despite that it still wins three points for practicality the mercedes gets two points and the little gi yaris just one point If you buy a hot hatch, you're probably going to want to take it on track at some point. So I'm going to compare these cars on a circuit, starting with the Civic Type R. Now I'm going to drive them around this little sprint course and time them, see which one does the quickest lap. Now it's the middle of winter and it's very, very icy. So there's my racing driver excuses right there. And this being front wheel drive only <laughs> means it's struggling already to put down its power. Well, and it's <laughs> a little bit leery. Come on, let's go. We've got it in R plus mode. But with the stability on, just to help me out a bit, because it can get a little bit leery, this thing. Come on, steady on the power. Be patient. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> just wants to lift off oversteer. Oh, come on. Oh, the brakes are so nice, though. It really does just feel flat, solid, and race car like. If only it was summer and dry. I reckon it'd be amazing. Feels like a racing car. You did a 31.82. I'll take that. All right, let's see what the Toyota can do. So I've got it in track mode because I'm on a track. I've got rev matching on because the pedals are a bit too far apart for me to confidently heel and tow. And I've got stability off because I've got all wheel drive. Go on, see if that's a mistake. <laughs> Hopefully I won't crash it. Oh, it feels Whoa! <laughs> It'll slide a bit. So in track mode, it sends 50% of the power to the rear wheels, which is great because it means you can just get on the power a little bit earlier than I could in the Civic. It feels a little bit more pointy because it's shorter. It's slightly less race car-like. I don't think you get quite as good feedback through the controls as you do on the Honda. And the gear shift, while lovely, isn't quite as snappy. That's across the line. Was it quicker though? You did that one in 31.27. Ooh, slightly quicker than the Honda then. Finally, we come to the Mercedes. So I've got in race mode with the stability in sport handling mode. So let me fall around a bit, but should gather me up if I get a bit too carried away. But let's find out. <laughs> it will slide around this thing well. It's very clever how leery it can be. Oh, that's not going to be good for my time. But maybe the engine's performance can help bail me out. Oh, it feels a bit more electronic than the other two, this car like all the systems are just helping you be a bit better than you really are but let's find out if that actually works out to a quicker lap time you did that in 30.36 this is the quickest car and it was also a lot of fun sliding it around this wins the track test While well, timing these cars around a circuit is all well and good, what really matters for a hot hatch is how much fun it is to drive on a twisty road. And this A45S is an absolute monster 
it covers ground so quickly and so effortlessly. You'd be amazed how quick it can go. In fact, in some ways, you can go too quick in it because you're hooning along, having fun. You look down at the speedo and you realize that you're going quick enough to go straight to jail. Now, that is a slight problem because you have to be absolutely hammering it to really get the thrills from it. <laughs> and sometimes it's just too hard to do it safely on the roads. Another slight detraction is the fact that it's automatic. Yes, you can change gears yourself by pulling on the pedals, but it's not as involving as having three pedals and a manual gear shifter. But still, this thing is epic and really good fun. Jumping out of the Mercedes and into this, this feels a lot more analog, whereas the Mercedes more digital. You feel that its systems are just helping you a bit more. This, for starters, has a manual gearbox and three pedals, and the placement of the pedals is perfect for heel and towing, <laughs> which just adds to the fun. And this is an amazing car. There's just so much feel through all the controls. It's absolutely epic. I think, had it been completely dry on the track, this would have put in the quickest time. The problem comes though, when the conditions aren't quite so good, it can all get a little bit sketchy, it starts spinning up its wheels and oh, it gets a bit terrifying. And really, on an unfamiliar road, you can't cover ground as quick as you can in the Mercedes. However, generally, most of the time on a twisty road, you just get a little bit more back from this car. You feel like you have to work harder at it. And so ultimately, it's just a bit more fun. Finally then, we come to the GR Yaris, and what an amazing little car. So this combines the sure-footed, ground-covering capability of that AMG, but with all the tactility of the Honda. I'm absolutely in love with it. Now being small, you can really thread it down a twisty back route, full of confidence, and obviously you've got all that grip from the four-wheel drive system. It's insane how quick you can go in it. You can still have fun at lower speeds than in the other two cars. There's just something about it. Part of the reason for that is that you can change the four-wheel drive system from sending 60% of the power to the front to having 70 at the back when you're in sports mode. So you get pushed out of turns and it feels like a sports car, not like a Yaris hatchback. Though, of course, it's not really a Yaris hatchback at all, is it? It's a homologation special rally car. <laughs> And what a little thing. It's just nuts. Cars like this will not be built again. This is a watershed moment. Anyway, enough of all that. I need to give you some scores. I'm going to give the Yaris three points. It's just so epic. Two points go to the Civic because it is a load of fun. It's just marred slightly that if the conditions aren't bang on, it can be a bit of a pain to drive. And one point to the Mercedes because while it is brilliant on a twisty road, it's almost a little bit too easy. It's not as involving as the other two cars. The final challenge is what these cars are like as daily drivers, because the thing about a hot hatch is it's often the only car. So you need to be able to use it for just general commuting and driving around town, and it shouldn't get on your nerves. I'm gonna start off with this Toyota, and it's actually surprisingly good. Round town, being small, makes it dead easy to drive and nip through traffic, makes it easy to park. The only downside is that the rear window is quite small, but it doesn't matter because you've got parking sensors and a rear view camera, which is fairly decent. Another thing that's good about it is the fact that while the suspension is on the firm side, and it's even firmer still with this track pack, it's not bad. It can cope with speed humps, it can cope with potholes. It's an easy car to drive around town. And that beeping you hear there is that you've got all the safety systems such as lane departure warning. Now what's even more important is that when you get on the motorway, this car has a feature which is brilliant and it makes it easy to live with and that's automatic cruise control with lane keeping assist. So it'll do all the hard work of keeping you in lane, keeping you safe distance from the car in front. So those long motorway journeys are just less stressful. The only real problem this car has is that the sound insulation isn't great. So you do get quite a lot of noise from those tires echoing around the cabin. But really, for this kind of car, it's surprisingly easy to live with. Now I've jumped into the Civic. You might think that this is gonna be a better daily driver than the Yaris, but while it does come with adaptive suspension as standard, so you can put it into comfort mode, the difference isn't as much as you might think. It still does struggle a little bit with tiny imperfections in the road. It's not too bad though, and you could quite easily live with it. One thing that this isn't as good at as that little Yaris is the fact that it's a bigger car. As a result, it is harder to park it, and you do sit really low 
in the Civic Type R, which is absolutely brilliant when you're driving on track or on a twisty road because you feel part of the car, but it does mean that your view forwards isn't quite as good. So that lofty driving position, which in some ways for sports car fans can be annoying in the Yaris, is actually a benefit on your daily commute. There is one particular thing about the Civic Type R that does really do my head in when I'm driving it round town, and that's the turning circle. It's 12.5 metres, which is terrible. By contrast, the Yaris is 10.8 metres. That means that if you need to do a U-turn or you go around a mini roundabout, it's such hard work in this Civic Type I. It does my head in every time I have to park this. When you're going faster, you can calm down a bit. Just like the Yaris, this car has automated cruise control, so it uses a radar, keep a safe distance from the car in front, or we'll still keep you in lane, and it's standard. When you're traveling along at speed, this car is probably just slightly quieter than the Yaris, but actually noisier than I imagined, and the engine can be a little bit droney at times. You don't get quite as much tire noise as the Yaris, but maybe more wind noise. I'd say this has the edge slightly until it comes to the final point. Being two-wheel drive, front-wheel drive especially, when you combine that with the punchy engine, you can find that you lose traction all too easily. When you're driving for half of the year in the UK, the roads are always a bit greasy, and this car can sometimes feel a bit sketchy if you're accelerating out of a turn or if you're accelerating to join the motorway, flashing up the traction control, and that means it is a car that just requires a bit more concentration when you're driving it every day, and it can just get on your nerves a little bit. If you're in a dry country, absolutely fine. Doesn't matter that it's only two wheel drive, but you really do feel the benefit of four wheel drive in the UK. Last, but by no means least, we come to the A45S. It won't surprise you that this is the best daily driver. The ambience of the cabin is better than the other cars for starters. Being an automatic makes it easy to live with, especially around town. To be fair, sometimes this automatic gearbox can jolt randomly but still, it's easier than shifting gears yourself. And it's quite maneuverable as well. Much better than the Civic, not quite as good as the Yaris. The visibility is very good in this car, better than the Civic, so it's easier to thread through traffic. And let's be honest, just being sat inside this cabin for any length of time is nicer than being sat in the other two cars. And the infotainment system, brilliant easiest to use. Now this car has the plus package on it which costs an extra £6,000 which is a lot of money but it does include adaptive dampers and then when you've got the car in comfort mode it's really good over bumps. It's better than the Civic and it's definitely better than the Yaris. Honestly this is an easy car to live with. Now when you're going at speed on the motorway it feels the most refined as well. It's not dead quiet, you do still get quite a bit of noise from its sporty tyres but it is quieter than the other two and better for longer journeys, apart from one thing. And that's the fact that in the UK, you cannot get this car at all with adaptive cruise control with steering assist, which is bonkers. I don't know what Mercedes UK were doing by not making that feature available. I've driven this car in Germany with that, and it's really good. And that is really my only gripe with this car. Most people won't care, but I really do what love that. You can shut up. That is another thing that annoys me about this car. <laughs> She's always chiming in when you mention the M word. Anyhow, despite the fact that you're always interrupted by the voice recognition system and you can't get adaptive cruise with steering assist, this is still the best daily driver. And so it scores three points. The Yaris just about edges the Civic, so he gets two points. And the Civic comes last with one point. So then, what are the final scores? Well, in third place with 25 points is the Honda Civic Type R. In second place with 26 points is the Mercedes AMG A45S. But the overall winner with 27 points is the new Toyota GR Yaris. It is the ultimate hot hatch. And I've just proved it mathematically. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did and you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. Now, if you'd like to see a video of a Yaris GR racing against a Civic Type R in a drag race, click on that window there. Click on that window there to watch a Mercedes A45S race against a BMW M2 competition and an Audi RS3. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to see how much money you can save on a new car.